Update 20 Octavia's Anthem was released on the 25th of March 2017. In the update we got the new Warframe Octavia, the new quest Octavia's Anthem, which revolves around Octavia and the Cephalon Pseudo Syndicate, the Manticord, which is a new arsenal tab that lets players create symphonies for the Octavia Warframe, Captura Mode, which is a new photo booth mode that can be accessed through the Appearance tab within the arsenal, two new weapons, the Tenora, a rifle that has the ability to switch from semi-automatic and automatic within seconds, and the Pandero, a hard-hitting pistol that features two modes, a semi-automatic mode and a fan hammer mode that releases whatever ammo is left in the clip in an instant. The weapon buffs, changes and nerfs I talked about in a previous video have also been implemented with a few changes. The new corpus enemy, the Rattle, has also been introduced, and they'll be deployed by sniper crewmen, which have also received a spawn chance increase. Sapping Osprey spawn rates were also reduced, and the amount of Sapping Ospreys allowed in one instance has also been lowered. Nullifiers have finally received their changes, which were showcased in previous dev streams. Nullifier backpacks are now equipped with projector drones, which get deployed over their heads. These drones will now create the Nullifier bubbles, and determine whether or not the bubble should grow or shrink. If the projector drone is killed, the Nullifier bubble will be removed from that Nullifier's arsenal. The Helmuth Charger also got its reskin. If any of you want the old Charger skin back, you can purchase it for credits within the market. Limbo also received his rework, changing his abilities and how he interacts within the Rift. One of these changes is to his passive. While in the Rift, Limbo will slightly regenerate energy, and as an addition, any enemy he kills that is in the Rift will grant him 10 energy. We received a number of cosmetics, the Mucus Cyandana, the Macaque Wukong Helmet, the Cadenza Octavia Helmet, the Mirrodin Cavat Armor, and five new emotes. There was also a number of UI features and quality of life adjustments included. Most notable being the expanded arsenal statistics. This allows us to check the stats of weapons that have alternate fire modes and see how much damage those modes actually do. The reward graphic has also received a redesign. You'll see this whenever you complete the milestones in endless missions or just from missions in general. You can also now multi-purchase items from syndicates and barracketeer. And just like mods at the mod station, you can now select a complete stack of prime items when trading in ducats by pressing your third mouse button. Clans now also have a research tab within their clan profile screen and you'll be able to switch loadouts from the star chart so they don't waste time heading back to your arsenal. The inventory screen now has a search option and all category. You can now join someone's game by typing forward slash join, then their name, as long as their lobby is in public mode. Riven mod disposition has also been changed from the fate neutral and strong system to a 5 point system. The mastery rank up button under your profile icon has now been moved and placed within the menu tabs, now when a player is eligible for a rank up, the menu option will appear. Upon clicking the tab, the player will be greeted with a new graphic that will show you what mastery rank test you're about to attempt, the rewards you'll receive, and the helpful tips about the test. You can now rename your mod configurations to better distinguish between builds. There's new music zones in relays for Octavia players that want to share their mixtape. The Latron, Sycorus, Hikau, Furus, and the A Furus have all received a PBR treatment. And there's a new discoverable I-10 sculpture titled the Volano. Dojos and clans received a number of changes with the update as well. I'll be going in depth with another video coming out soon, but just to skim over it, dojos are now hosted by DE, just like the relay system. This means anyone from your clan can now be in the dojo at any time. The only restriction being the maximum amount of players within a dojo is 50. Once the cap is reached, a new room will be created. Clan trading has now been improved upon. Clan members can now set up a shop anywhere within the dojo, just as they would if they were trading within Maru's Bazaar. In addition to the previous changes, clans now have an affinity and ranking system. Upon building an ascension altar and ranking up, members of your clan will now have 72 hours to collect endo as a reward from the ceremony. Any clan and its members that have completed all their research and undergone the ceremony will receive a clan rank of 9, and receive 45,000 endo as long as they interact with the altar within the 72 hour period. Finally, there was also a number of additions to Archwing. The most notable being there is now a toggle option within the Archwing menu, 
where you can decide whether you want to play as the old or new flight system. They've also removed unusable ammo drops and improved the radius and sock speed of the Archwing's vacuum. Sadly, due to the number of fixes and changes that came with the update, it'll be impossible to read them all without boring you. So what I talked about today were to me the most important changes that you should know about when it comes to update 20. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next video.